Hi, I'm Chin Lu. And I'm Sal, and this is Our Next Make. We've been hard at work on a major upgrade for the shop that we can't wait to show you next week. So this week we decided to take on a smaller project where we'll be organizing the drill bits for this drill press. And hopefully in the same project, we can bring some fun and whimsy to the shop. As a child, I remember loving those wooden crayon holders that came in the shape of animals or vehicles, and I thought it would be cool to make something like that to store drill bits. So I took a quick stab at sketching an idea. On my iPad, I used the 3D Sketch app to draw a fun little hedgehog and showed it to Chin Lu so we could start brainstorming. I then opened up 3D Whiteboard to capture our inspirations and start to iterate on styling. I grouped together pictures that Sal was inspired by and brought in his 3D Sketch. The hedgehog bit holder is so cute. We started thinking of plants and animals that are spiky and then found ourselves thinking about one of our favorite video games, Super Mario Brothers and we imagined how cool it would be if the drill bits were Bowser's spikes. And we thought that the Forstner bits could be mushrooms dotted across the landscape, or tops to pipes. Normally, we would sketch our ideas on scrap papers or backs of junk mail, but having these apps at our fingertips on the 3D Experience platform allows us to capture everything digitally, and we can retrieve them anywhere on any of our devices. At some point, I started thinking about one of my favorite TV shows, Survivor, and the really cool immunity item from a recent season. One look at it and we both knew that it needed to influence our make. So we got to work designing. I started an X design with a simple sketch that allowed me to achieve an even spacing between the various diameter Forstner bits. This parametric CAD tool lets me quickly change things and see how the design will update and make sure things will fit on the material we have at hand. With the basic layout figured out, I headed out to the shop to start building. I cut a scrap piece of cherry plywood down to size and then set up a stop block on the miter saw to cut eight identical 45 degree wedges, as well as a few smaller pieces. I used painter's tape to hold the pieces together while I tested their fit, and then traced their position on the back of the cherry plywood. I started by gluing the three smaller pieces together, and then glued them down to the plywood. These acted as sort of a jig while I glued and clamped the other pieces. While Sal was in the shop, I hopped on my MacBook and launched X-Design. I transformed his basic layout into a full design. I modeled the overall shape of the Ouroboros, and then added details for the head and fins. I then exported DXF files of the various pieces so Sal could see and see everything. When I'm working with plywood, I first make a shallow cut with a spiral down cut bit. This prevents the top layer of plywood from splintering. After a quick vacuuming, I change to a spiral up cut bit and finish cutting all the way through the thickness. The design is already looking amazing. The maple accents are only an eighth of an inch thick, about three millimeters. To help the small pieces survive the cutting process, I apply a few strips of painter's tape to the underside before I fasten it to the table. Then I keep my push sticks at the ready in case I notice any piece start to pull away from the stock. Using a sharp utility knife, I cut through the tabs and free the parts. Off camera, I used a small carving knife to remove the remaining tabs and tidy up the parts. Now I'm turning my attention to building the standoffs that will hold the Ouroboros away from the wall as well as act as legs when it's placed on a work surface. I had a few leftover pieces of pine from an old project where I glued three layers together, so I used them to make the legs. One of them is shaped to match the end of the Ouroboros tail, and the other two are simple cylinders. I just cut out the pieces of the bandsaw, making relief cuts as needed to help make the tight turns. I also took this opportunity to cut a miniature French cleat system to hold everything to the wall. I cut a 45 degree notch in a large block and then trimmed off the bottom corner so it didn't look so blocky. I used the off cut to make the small cleat that will mount to the Ouroboros. Because the piece was so small, I used a push stick to keep my fingers safe. Over at the drill press, I drilled a few holes in the legs and the cleat to make room for the drill bits that would pass through them when everything was all put together. We did a quick layout to confirm that we liked the look of the drill bit mohawk. And then Sal drilled each of the holes. He added blue painter's tape to each drill bit to act as a depth gauge and then used the next larger bit to drill a hole for the previous size. That way, it would be easy to remove and replace each bit. As a last bit of assembly, we glued and screwed the French cleat to the back. We placed the Forstner bit in its hole to make sure the hole in the cleat lined up, and then we glued and clamped the three legs as well. Once the glue was dry, I covered the cherry surface with paper and tape. That way, I could avoid getting paint on it. 
Then I used black acrylic paint to cover the sides of the Ouroboros. It took a bit of time to get into all of the nooks and crannies, especially around the face, but once I was finished and the paint had a few minutes to dry, I used white acrylic paint to cover the back and the legs. I made sure to not paint the French cleats so things wouldn't stick when they were mounted to the wall. With the paint all dry, we could start the slightly nerve-wracking step of gluing on the maple accents. We used super glue to hold the pieces in place, which meant we could finish this step very quickly, but it also meant that if we misaligned things, we'd have to live with it. Thankfully, everything went well, and we could move on to applying finish. We added two coats of polyacrylic, sanding with 400 grit in between coats. Once everything was dry, we loaded the Ouroboros up with all the bits, placed it on the wall-mounted cleat, and put it to the test. It's really simple to grab the size you need, and the fact that it's on a French cleat means that it can be easily taken off the wall and placed on a work surface when needed. I absolutely love how this project turned out. Not only does it look amazing, but it puts the drill bits right where they need to be with an arm's length of the drill press. I can't wait to start using it every day. And it looks so amazing. Every time I see it, it puts a smile on my face. And who doesn't like a mohawk made of drill bits? If this inspired you to put some whimsy into your shop or your home, please let us know in the comments. And be sure to tune in next week when we'll be showing you the big project that we've been working on in the shop. And so until then, we'll see you on our next make.